Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar, Harnessing Volunteer Motivation. This is one of three part series and our third to be run this year. Your presenters today are myself, Janine Harris, and... Myself, I think, <laughs> Cecily Michael. We would like to invite you to use the question tab of your dashboard to communicate with us. And we've got some pictures to show you how to find that. So if you've got a PC, you will see this diagram on the left, um, will be on the right hand side. You actually have to click on that orange arrow. That will expand it into what you can see next. And then you have to, again, click on the question arrow and that will drop um, a box. And it's actually the bottom box. It's not intuitive. We realise that. So if you could just practise using that and type in where you're logging in from. And so far we've got 18 of our 62 participants signing in. So that's a great turnout already. And someone's already writing in. But before that, just if you're using a device or an iPad, it's simpler in some ways. It's just those little icons at the top and you click on the question. And again, you've got to go to the bottom box to actually type. So hopefully that's clear to everyone. Can we also, uh, if someone could also tell us in the question bar too, if our mic, if our sound is okay as well, that would be great. I say Lucy's here from Radio Adelaide. Welcome, Lucy. I'm just gonna Thanks, over. Kevin. Kevin said it sounds fine. Thank you. Great. And our oh, Kevin's here from Mackay. I'm from Queensland, Kevin. So I hope it's a nice day up there for you and you're not too wet from what we can hear. Wagga Wagga, your Kate's here from Wagga Wagga. Um, she also says the sound is fine. Miguel is here from the New South Wales Office of Sport. Mm. Uh, Natalie is from Yes. And have we got anyone else? Uh, that's it for now. You're all still writing. So if you're just joining us now, we've just asked you to go into the question tab and type in where you're writing in from. And we will be using this mechanism to communicate throughout. So anything you write in, no one else can see it, unfortunately, but we will be reading it out. So we just want to tell you a bit about LEAP because uh, we're pretty proud of what we do here. So LEAP is in the heartland of Western Sydney and in the suburbs called Penrith. We're a group that create inclusive communities through digital inclusion, providing volunteer solutions and CommuniNet, our leading e-news portal for the not-for-purpose sector. Is that right? Not-for-purpose? Yeah. <laughs> It's for purpose. purpose. It's for purpose. purpose or not for profit sector in New South Wales. I don't always read out my script, so I just did it. That was wrong. We send out over 20,000 emails weekly, and you can subscribe by going to communitynet.ngo, and you could find, um, you'll, there's a whole range of different e newsletters there. Our digital inclusion work includes the Leap in Lab, our on site digital mentoring program, and our Leap Online initiative through which we support organisations to establish their own digital literacy programs. We are surprisingly affordable as well um, for any consultancy work that you might like, like this um, webinar today is one of our consultancy um, jobs, which we um, is a contract with the Good Things Foundation, who we partnered with many years ago um, with New South Wales government funding to start digital mentoring programs for people with disability in New South Wales. Anyway, if you want to know a little bit more about us, um, our website is, as you can see on the screen, leap.ngo. Could I just pause before I ask you to tell us about the volunteer stuff and just give us a few more names? Because mm -hmm. we've got a lot of you coming in today. We've got 24 so far. So we've got Karen here from Nethercott Products produce markets. We've got Gigi from Broken Hill. Welcome Gigi. I've been to Broken Hill once and think it's amazing. We actually do IT support and training out that way. Annette from Windsor. Um, Natalie from Yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Beck from New England in Varel. And Norajan from Bathurst. Welcome. And why am I muted? Um, Deidre asks. Uh, Deidre, uh, everyone is muted, so um, it's just the way the program comes. It's an American program, and they don't allow people to talk, I don't think, anyway, through um, the webinar um, platform. So the only way you can talk to us is actually type in where you are now, and we will get it and respond to it as soon as we can. So, Janine, could you tell us about what happens in the Volunteer Solutions team? LEAP is funded to support volunteer involving organisations in Western Sydney 
As well as promoting volunteering and referring volunteers to organisations, we support volunteer managers in training, managing and retaining volunteers. So how many, you know, volunteer involving organisations do we support in Western Sydney? We have at least 180 on our database. So that's a moment. lot of people we support. Yeah, that's so that's right. why we're doing this webinar, because yeah. we have a lot of experience. Yes. And a, and a big part of my role too at LEAD is to manage the internal volunteer management systems. So I'm really excited to share with you today some of my experience with you. Now, no one else has joined us, um, although there's 27 now. So we were asking um, those new people on the webinar to use your question tab on the right hand side of your screen if you've got a PC um, to type in the second box that drops down um, where you're logging in from just so we can see that you can use this platform and then later on we're going to be asking you to write, going to be asking you to write um, some responses in there. So um, moving on, I, <laughs> we're presenting this webinar today as part of the Beer Connect program. This program is being delivered in Australia by the Good Things Foundation, which is a UK organisation that has a wealth of experience in delivering, well, supporting digital mentoring. They, um, in the UK, they use an online e-learning tool that has put over 2 million people online using, you know, you know developing digital mentoring skills. Um, they are funded in Australia by the Department of Social Services to deliver the Be Connected Network. And the Be Connected Network is a federal funded program aimed at improving digital literacy for older Australians so they can get online safely and confidently. So as you can see in the diagram, they've contracted us to deliver these webinars. And that's why we ask you in the registration, uh, are you a member and do you want to know more about it? So we've just got Joanne here from Orange. Hi, Joanne. And Darren Yates, you didn't tell us where you're from, so if you'd like to tell us. And Anna Morgan, you're from Preston Reservoir Adult Community Education, Northern Metro Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Welcome, all of you. So we have 31. Oh, Darren's from Orange as well. Love Orange. Um, we also work there doing IT support um, for people that are funded to work with the age and disability sector. Hi, Amber. Amber's from Blacktown. Oh, oh we, we, still we, know, we know Amber. She's in one of our volunteer involving organisations. Oh, great. Deirdre's from Turing Point. And sorry I'm late, is Helen from the Snowy Mountains Neighbourhood Centre. Welcome, Helen, and from Jindabyne. Yes. Well, maybe we could come and visit you one day. <laughs> okay. We enjoyed uh, reading your responses for what you'd like to get out of this webinar. Most of you mentioned that you'd like ideas and strategies on how to motivate or inspire volunteers. This is definitely covered in this webinar. If it wasn't, we would be failing. <laughs> <laughs> Others wanted to improve their current practices and another wanted to know how to deal with difficult volunteers. Mention was also made about motivating overcommitted and under-resourced volunteers, and we will touch on these topics. So Gail is uh, just arrived from Newcastle Library. Hi, Gail. And Helen says we're most welcome to Ginger Vine. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone asked about strategic planning for volunteer recruitment and training, which we cover in our next webinar titled Tips for Recruiting Volunteers, which is scheduled for the 12th of April. And I've just put up on the screen how you can book for that if you've forgotten. So you could go to either the beconnectednetwork.org.au, training resources. You do have to go through a, a range of different topics to find it, but if you go to train our website and go under training and events, and then you can see right at the bottom is the webinar tab, click on that and you can also book there. If we don't address all your needs in this webinar, we'll let you know how you can contact us at the end. There is a resource pack as well that accompanies this webinar. You can find it in the um, handout section, section yeah. of uh, the panel. It's just below questions. So if you click on that, you should be able to start downloading it now and then you can refer to it throughout the webinar. And we'll be making that resource and a recording of this webinar available next week as well. Yes, after Easter. So we're now going to move into our topic. So if you've just joined us, um, welcome. What motivates volunteers? Um, this is for us the crucial thing to un unpack right from the very beginning and as 
Janine will say even before they start volunteering. So here's a few reasons we put on the screen, but we'd love you to tell us what you think the reasons are for people volunteering. So again, use your question bar, and I think everyone's still here that's already used it, so you should be able to find it, and tell us why you think people volunteer. Social connection, making friends, Lucy says, using skills. Oh, you're a very fast typer. Uh, to give back to the community, Darren, give back to the community, yes. Um, make a difference, absolutely. Karen, thank you for that. Anyone else want to give us any reasons? We certainly had give back, passion about a cause maybe, improve your mental health. Um, Sport, uh, Kevin says, supporting fellow retirees, um, explore new areas, absolutely, Gigi. Um, noticing lack of services capability in rural areas, so you think that's people who, you know, can see that lack and they want to get in there and help, mm -hmm. to feel that they are making a difference and helping others, says Gail. I'd like to know, Cecily, um, for, for that, so there's a lot of you who are, are aware of volunteer motivations. Um, can you tell us, do you ask your volunteers about their motivation before they begin their role? We haven't got to that yet, have we? Can I, because oh, I, 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 I have to share this, there are such good responses. Mm. So Gail has, uh, both said, uh, no, Anna said to develop new skills and increase confidence and Lucy said get training. And Kate said, ensure whatever organisation your child is involved in continues to run successfully. Ooh, oh, that's, that's a good one. Well, that's when you're a European, that's you. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's a great I, one. My days are over on that one. But yes, you're absolutely right. You want to be uh, ensuring things stay mm -hmm. connected. And and look, this is all those reasons are so perfect and so valid for just about every context. And one more from Helen. Most of our volunteers are working with multiple organisations, and that's because you're in a small community where, yeah. Um, Mm. We've got a couple with us who are also volunteering at a couple. Absolutely, aren't they? yes. Yeah. Um, so, as Janine just said, we sorry. Love, um, so we've got a poll that we're going to actually run. Um, let me just get that poll up. Okay. Select. So this just means you only have to answer one or the other, or mm. um, unsure. So do you ask your volunteers about their motivation before they start a role? The crucial thing is before. So the research conducted by um, the names of Clary and Snyder found volunteer motivation was a key factor in recruitment, their satisfaction with the volunteer experience and sustained volunteer service. This is also consistent with what leaves philosophy and practice in harnessing volunteer motivation throughout the volunteer life cycle is as well. So we've got 59% have voted, and so I'm just going to close this poll and share it with you all. Yes, you can see the answers. So we've got yes from 59%, 35% no, and six were unsure. Um, so that's really good to sort of gauge where where this group is at, um, the whole 31 of you. And we will, as we go through, um, help you all realise why 100% should be the response at the end. Yes. <laughs> Carry on. And let me just um, hide this and make sure that it goes away. It's not, yes, it is. Good. Uh, this is just a reminder for the oh, uh, yes, that, late that, 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 so. we've, we're, Everyone's pretty happy. Yeah. Okay, volunteer life cycle. So during this webinar, we'll be referring to three parts of the volunteer life cycle. You will find a copy of our model in your resource kit. In the pre-volunteering stage, this is when you assess motivation and match a volunteer to an appropriate role. In the volunteering stage, we unpack some of the processes and strategies that will assist you in harnessing your volunteers' motivation. In the transition stage, we explore our processes for preparing the volunteer for the next part of their journey. The key message we hope you take away from this webinar is that volunteer motivation is integral to every stage of the volunteer life cycle. So if you want to maintain their motivation, it needs to be taken into consideration at every stage. At LEAP, we ask people why they want to volunteer. 
but we also dig deeper. Before we go on, tell us what you do by answering this poll for us. So we particularly um, want to know uh, what was it? How is this? How's this experience? What are your goals? Mm -hmm. um, what skills? Yes, I asked you what. Why do we want to know what skills um, they want to learn from this role, Janine? Mm -hmm. Why do they? Why do we want to know that? Um, what skills do they want to learn from this role? Uh, that's really important because when volunteers. Uh, join a, a new role, um, they may be wishing to be involved in the role to gain skills for employment. Yes, absolutely. That's, that might be one of their motivations. So again, we've only got, oh, we've got 41% who voted. So that means about 15 of you. So 45%, nearly 50. Um, we're going to close the poll in a second. For those of you who selected other, could you write in the question section what else you would ask them in the pre-volunteering stage? Asking these types of questions unpacks the depth of motivation mm -hmm. and provides an indication of whether the organisation is able to meet the needs of the potential volunteer. Identifying goals and skills are integral to understanding a volunteer's motivation. Okay. We've got 55% voted, so I'm going to close this poll and share it with you all. Let me go to the audience view so I can make sure that's really out there. Great. So, Janine, I'll just read this out because I can see it better than you. 44% um, said that they asked, what are your goals? That's an awesome response, I think. It's close to 50% mm. and that's a really good start. 56% said, what skills do you want to learn in this role? 75% what experience do you have for this role, which you know is pretty um, standard, isn't it? And 38% ask how will this assist you in uh, what's the rest of that? I can't read it from here. In the what experience do you have? Um, what ex assist you in reaching your goal? Yes. So I'm just going to um, go back to hide this, and I'm going to check the question section because. Some people wrote in here. What about um, other things were, we ask, oh, I did something just happened just a minute. I'm rolling down here. We ask, what does being a volunteer mean to you, Anna said. Um, Mary said, what motivates you to express your interest in volunteering with us? That's a really good one for us, mm. taking the value that they have for the organisation. Sometimes other reasons we don't emphasise the background they need. Maybe I can't read all of that from it's really hard, isn't it, when you, the question box is so tight? Let me get out again. Uh, Helen asks, do you have a particular school you can share that will benefit the community and other volunteers? Natalie asks, how often do you want to volunteer? What is your availability? Yes. That's important. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you speak another language, Miguel asks. That's a good one too in a certain context. Let me just check. We haven't missed some up here. Thanks everyone for giving your thoughts because it really makes a difference if you're all sharing with each other. Availability and whether they uh, have their working with children check. Some organisations will do that for the volunteers, but if you, you know, others demand that they come with it. Why did you choose our service, said Amber, yes. That's a good one for motivations um, because you do want to find volunteers that sit in well with the values of your organisation and purpose of your organisation. And how much time do you have to give to the role? Absolutely, that's all good logistical stuff to know. We just ask a more general question. Why do you want to volunteer? And they give details, sometimes skills, Lucy said. Yes, okay, so that's a great start, Lucy. Mm -hmm. And you, we haven't given them that one, have we, the, what we do for the pre-volunteer, okay. Um, I think I have to go to a picture, don't I? Is there a... Yeah, so uh, we're just going to um, give you an example of uh, when we have asked for a volunteer about their motivations before they start with us. Um, so as you can see here, we have on, on the screen, um, one of our volunteers, Lisa, um, 
So Lisa, um, her motivations were to, well, were they necessarily to come to us because she wanted social work skills? Well, she was studying social work and mm. she has two young children and a really supportive husband and she looked online for a volunteer role because she wanted to, you know, enhance her life a bit more. But she, when she saw the digital um, mentoring role, she thought this would be really good and it was because it actually gave her, um, the woman that we've got her in the picture here with, um, had a range of um, challenging things she had to deal with in her life and Lisa was the best mentor for her in so many ways like it was case managing as well as digital mentoring and it, it, it transcribed that um, Robin um, dared Lisa to try her favourite sandwich which was made on stale bread, it had tomato sauce and peanut butter and Lisa did it to just you know as part of her wanting to have empathy with um, build Rob rapport. and build yeah. rapport with Robin. But yes, um, she she was here until she um, graduated, and um, now she's off working as a social worker. Mm. And and her uh, her motivations uh, were being met while she was with us, and she was an amazing, dedicated volunteer. And see, so often volunteers are recruited to meet an organisation's need without taking into consideration the aspirations of the volunteer. So when a volunteer's motivation is considered equally as important as the organisation's need, volunteers will feel valued, they'll have a sense of belonging and they'll be inspired towards achieving the organisation's vision. And that, um, I, you know, I could talk about Elizabeth in that case too, that um, Elizabeth um, was sitting in a coffee shop one morning next to me where I was just getting some work done where I could have some quiet and I saw her texting on her phone so I asked her, you know, would she like to volunteer? I mean, I got this urge and I thought, no, no, don't bother her, she's enjoying her coffee. But my urge wouldn't go away. So I finally, you know, reached over and said, Would you, could I just ask you a question? She said, yes. And when I told her what I wanted to ask her, she was like, I can't believe you just did that. I woke up this morning thinking I want to find a volunteer role. But when she came and um, volunteers at a digital mentor, she really wasn't very confident. And what we, when we talked to her, we found out that um, she was excellent. She had a lot of um, PR experience and she was excellent engaging with people. So we we then restructured her role to being, um, to using more, skill. Yeah, and more in line with her motivations yes. and skills. Um, so if you're not asking about motivations at, at the start, we do recommend that you start doing it. So now we're at the volunteering stage. We need to look at how we build on their motivation to keep them engaged. You will notice in your resource kit that we've suggested eight strategies and matched them with the national volunteer standards. There are other strategies you could also use, uh, but we're focusing on um, those eight. Um, please complete this poll to tell us what you are currently doing to manage your volunteers' motivation. If you use other methods, please tell us in the question tab. So we've got 100% using recognition events at the, um, well, it keeps changing. So you're getting good at answering these polls. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, uh, the poll uh, shows um, a few, of course. There's a lot of others out there. Um, yeah, so the, you could be telling us more things than the other. Hmm. But look, everyone's answering this. We've got 63% response so far. That's fantastic. So I'll give you counting down from five, four, three, two, one. That's 67% response. I'm going to close it and I'm going to share it with you all. Yay, it's working today. So I'll again read them out for you, Janine. 65% uh, say that they use training as part of their motivation strategies. 75% use recognition events, 75% use support and supervision. Oh, it would be really interesting if you tell us um, a bit more about what you consider support and supervision, how you do that, just if you could just send a comment or two. 75% involve volunteers in planning and revision. That That's is awesome. incredible. And 10% do other things. So with no one's written in yet, we're looking forward to reading what you do. I know it, it would come up with them. Um, uh, and didn't hear how to find the resource pack. Ah, it's un in the handouts and it's um, just below questions. You um, you will see it there, click on it, and there's one in there. Um, so 
So buddy induction and follow up, Helen's written, we use buddy support as another, that's a really good is that thing. Is that buddy support with other volunteers? I'm guessing it is. Induction to organisations, Great. social get togethers to exchange ideas, that's brilliant. That was from Mary. Yes, he said, no, or she said, meet regularly with my volunteers for coffee and discuss any problems as well as resources that they need. Gal, that sounds brilliant. How many volunteers do you have, Gal? Natalie says, support regular phone calls, Facebook closed group, brilliant, where people can share ideas with each other and organisation. Clear, effective communication, says Miguel. It's very important, super important, communication. And Anna says, we get our students to give our volunteers a round of applause at the end of every class, iPad for seniors, wow. It might seem simple, but this process leaves us feeling great, totally, totally. Mm. That's a great story. I, I, I can, love that. I want to share, um, just on that one, Anna, um, when I first started here at this organisation, um, I set up the volunteer um, support service originally, but... Um, and then I went to this training with Judy Esmond and she asked for, I don't know, five volunteers. There's maybe 100 people in the room. Judy Esmond is a guru. In fact, we've got her quite, I think, on the promo for this webinar. She is a lecturer at Western Australia University. Anyway, she asked for five, a few volunteers, only three or five of us. Um, and I don't know, I put up my hand and she asked us to leave the room and we really wondered what was going to happen to us because it was not clear. Anyway, we left the room and she talked to this whole room of people. Maybe there was more than 100. And then they asked us to come back in. And as we walked in, everyone was standing and applauding us. And even though I had done absolutely nothing but just volunteer to be the guinea pig, I felt like I've got something amazing. And the power of clapping is, yes, and, a, um, you know, certainly a very simple but a, 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 but effective um, way of recognising volunteers. Mm, mm. So Gail has said, I have six, but this varies according to clients and take university commitments of, of the students. So that's a manageable size, yes. Thank you, all of you. We will go back to the content that we've got prepared here. Now let me just uh, hide this and um, make sure, yes, it's working. So just um, to talk about training for a bit, just to, to unpack the sort of different topics that we all do. Um, we're wondering what training you do. So if you'd like to tell us with your volunteers now, because there's such a huge range of um, volunteer managers on this webinar, we, we expect a different range of topics. But for what we do, when we've been funded originally to work in the sector that supports the frail age and people with disability and this is where the bulk of our training has been developed and, and now is expanding into other areas as we've been funded for the last couple of years to do volunteer involving organisations. We developed a legend to volunteering as an orientation training. We called it legend because I find the word orientation really boring. A legend is what you need to, to understand to read a map. Volunteering is a journey. But also by being a volunteer, you are a legend like that, you know, this figure. Um, boundaries, because that's fundamental in a lot of volunteering roles. Accidental counselling is one of our newer ones and extremely popular. Self-care, and we're currently developing disability and a cultural inclusion um, program. Um, what have you said? Okay, sorry I missed the list, link to the resource pack. Um, Helen, it is in the handout section, which is below the questions. Uh, yes. Um, Hemadri says that she does induction training, covering info about organisation, roles, responsibility, work health safety, child protection, privacy and confidentiality, all absolutely key topics to cover. Mm, definitely. So what we do something similar now, induction, don't we, Janine? Definitely. So within your induction, uh, you should have uh, dis your job description discussed and agreed to, or role description, I should say, sorry, not, not job description, role, role description, um, rights and responsibilities for volunteers, boundaries, work health and safety, code of conduct and any other relevant policies and procedures. 
Okay, if that's okay with everyone, we're going to move on to the next topic in our um, um, all strategies for how to keep motivation going through the volunteering period. So this is just some samples of recognition things we've done. Uh, again, if you'd like to tell us, we've got a little poll what you do. So I'm launching that now. And while you're answering that, I'll just tell you about the things on this uh, picture. So obviously um, this one's nominating our volunteer team for their um, for an award. And we didn't win, but we, it was certainly, everyone was very chuffed to get up there and accept that uh, nomination certificate. And um, the one at the bottom is when we had volunteers come and help us put on a digital festival, we asked Hoyt, Hoyt if they would give us some free movie vouchers and they were quite happy to do that. Uh, and that was just me presenting some. We also use our volunteers as their photograph as part of our promotional um, materials to promote the volunteer roles. I'm super passionate about that one. Um, <laughs> we, it's, it gives our volunteers that little bit of extra, um, I don't know, oomph, I, I can't think of a better word, but when they're presenting and being the face of our organisation, a sense of pride, that's what I'm trying to say, it gives them such a sense of pride and really motivates them because they're feeling really valued as part of the organisation. And you know what, I've just realised, everyone, I'm really sorry, you can't see these pictures while we're doing the poll, so we will actually hold back on talking oh, more about yes, it until yes. you can, we can tell you about what the responses were. So. 89% verbal praise, 67% certificates, 50% recognition events, 22% birthday cards, and 33% others. So let's see what we said in the others. Um, uh, I think this is back in the training section. Um, Gail was saying that we cover basic literacy, digital literacy, as well as ESL literacy, depending on the needs of the cities. Great. Um, Helen says we promote and present a volunteer of the year at the AGM. Oh, that's, yes, that's, nice. that's an excellent idea. We um, also do that, don't we? We um, mm. do um, sort of years of volunteering certificates as yeah, well. Yeah, years of service. Yeah, yeah years of service. Um, Hoyt's movie vouchers donations, attend events, handwritten cards from the students they've helped. That is so nice. I have to confess that we haven't been able to uh, quite get to the birthday cards yet. So I'm going back to the slides. It's coming, there you go. So you can see um, what we do. But don't hesitate to keep writing in if you've got other things you've done. So um, as well as like using, that was. Um, yeah, so we were up to the. No, but what you, was his name? That's Joe. Yes, so that, that Joe's picture on our postcard to promote um, digital mentoring. But the one on the right, did you want to show about that? Say something about that? Yes, so uh, the, the picture on the right at the bowling, so that was in National Volunteer Week where we took our volunteers out for bowling and then for lunch. Uh, we had such a great day and it's a great opportunity to really to team build as well and have a bit of fun with the staff and discussion. And uh, that picture there is of um, one of our volunteers who just got a, uh, a strike. <laughs> yeah, yes, and she had been she had been missing quite a bit, so it was a, a really happy moment. Um, and then the one on the bottom is um, we organised a forum last year with a partnership with Ability Links in Uniting um, to really promote creating digital communities. And this was the panel discussion. And so on the stage is myself and um, you can't see my colleague who was on the other side of it. Then. But Chris is in the middle and Chris is one of our most amazing digital mentors. And uh, he, you know, using your volunteers to be the spokesperson for the organisation just, I think, gives them, gives the organisation so much credibility, but also gives them the opportunity to really experience how valued they are as, you know, equally to a paid staff member. Mm. Okay, we, Janine, before we go on, I just want to check what else some people have written here. Um, barbecue days and morning tea, says Amber, handwritten, yeah, we've got that one. And also we give volunteers positive feedback from clients. That's a fantastic idea, Amber. Um, awesome. So we now move to, oh, with the case study. Um, this was... 
the, the thing we wanted to share with this is um, honestly, when we got when we finished the ten pin bowling, it was only a few of the staff went and played um, that with the volunteers because everyone was too busy. But we all then met at the restaurant and. All the staff were at one end and the volunteers were going to sit at the other end and I quickly said, could you please move around? And so they did and that way we could have a mixture of volunteers with staff. But what we had organised beforehand was delegating a staff member for each volunteer to give them their certificate and a gift and say some words of appreciation to them. So it just it wasn't just me doing all of that, it was everyone sharing it and everyone engaging with the volunteers. So we are all really... Um, recognising our volunteers as like really part of our team and it, it just works so well and you know at the um, I got the pleasure of acknowledging Chris and um, the guy we we're talking about um, who has a disability in our lab and you know I met him at a, a disability expo and I thought he might be someone who needed help with technology he was in a wheelchair and he said no I don't actually I'm pretty good at technology and I said oh wow could you volunteer and he's you know, asked what it was about and I told him, he said, oh yeah, I think I could easily do that. I help my mum all the time. Anyway, he has come twice a week, every week since, you know, for 18 months now. He's now taken on the facilitator role for the lab and he is becoming a trainer of trainers. So um, we've got some funding to pay for a cert for and he's studying that and he does the digital, being a digital mentor webinar in this series with Hamali. Anyway, what he said when we thanked him and we really appreciate him so much here. Uh, he said, you know, he teared up, which is so unlike Chris. He's a really, you know, great bloke. And he said how his life was so meaning, you know, like there was, yeah, there was. How wasn't. it had changed so yes, much. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, and he was so grateful. So, so now, this is just a simple ex example, this photograph of mixing in with the staff and it, for those who don't have a lot of staff and who are, who have a lot of volunteers um, at different structural levels, the same the same thing applies. It's really making the effort to mix. And, yes, and yeah. Gigi as says, Gigi. I'm sorry, Gigi. I'm not sure how I pronounce your name. We never have any money for this kind of thing, and I totally, I I actually feel guilty every time we talk about this example that that is. Could be the message you get but we also did a really simple barbecue uh, where we just got sausages and a couple of salads mm. and we invited the volunteers with their family and it was just as, as an amazing time you know even you could have the volunteers bring the food themselves if you have no funding we were just really lucky that we had some money in reserve that we could mm. use we won't be doing that this year we definitely um, can't afford to do it all the time <laughs> for sure yeah but yeah but we had the money and we decided to use it on that so um please don't feel like we're saying you have to spend a lot of money because it doesn't need the money uh, it's, uh, it's providing opportunities for the the team for staff and volunteers are a team or the board and the volunteers are a team yes um, yes. yes and the board team yeah and so now we have to come to the support and supervision section which is something that Janine is so passionate about and it is completely her forte, so I'm handing over to her. Support supervision is a key element of volunteer rights and responsibilities and I think about 75% of you are doing it, which is great. Um, if, you, if you're not familiar uh, with support and supervision, uh, we do have an example of our support and supervision uh, form that we use in the resource pack, but also resource rights and responsibilities. This is um, th this is actually um, a list that would come with the national standards for volunteering, isn't it? And we've given you our list that we use in the in the handout as well, the resource kit. So um, you can see where it's written that it is a right of volunteers, mm. and it's sometimes an overlooked right um, mm. as well. Um, on your screen, you can see some of the key questions we ask. We believe support and supervision is a great way to check in with volunteers after they have had about three months in the role to find out how they are settling into the organisation, how they're settling into their role, if they're feeling included, are they achieving their goals or do they want to change them? Do they wish to continue with the role? Do they require any further training? 
if you're thinking support and supervision is too time consuming and you're already feeling time poor, consider the time it takes to recruit and train a volunteer. Investing in this process, we believe, pays dividends for ensuring a volunteer is invested in their role and the organisation and thus being them motivated. It is also a great opportunity for feedback. They may have an idea for an improved procedure or they may take a moment to discuss a personal challenge with their level of commitment. Can I just pause you there? Because mm -hmm. I'm wondering, um, is there anyone on this webinar, there's 33 of you now, um, that would like to tell us if you actually do ask for feedback on how you're doing things and if you are able you know, to change things based on a volunteer's feedback? Just write that in while Janine keeps telling you. What, hmm. Some of you, so on that topic of commitment, some of you asked about our overcommitted volunteers. Sometimes providing an opportunity to discuss time management and commitment within support and supervision can bring some solutions to the forefront. It may lead to sharing the role tasks with another volunteer. Um, it may lead to a volunteer resignation as the volunteer may come to the conclusion themselves that they have overcommitted themselves. And sometimes in those cases, they just need to feel that it's okay to resign. Mm. Support and supervision is also the time when, if you have a difficult volunteer, you can work at resolving the underlying issue. The issue could be their motivation isn't being addressed. Another could be a problem with communication or they simply are not aligned with the organisation's values. And in this case, it may, it may be best to exit the volunteer. This, um, I, I think of this as really important to honour your volunteers as you would any other paid staff member and giving them respectful feedback. And this could be a whole topic in itself. So because of time, we're not going to go into it now. But uh, I, I, I'm not afraid to give anyone feedback if it's important for the whole organisation and at times that has meant a volunteering, a volunteer in this case chose to resign but he would have been sacked if he hadn't been <laughs> terminated, exited. So if you haven't been conducting support and supervision interviews with your volunteers, those 35% of you, hopefully we're convincing you to, and, and if you have a large group to manage, you might be thinking, oh, where, where should you start? Uh, you could perhaps break your volunteers into groups and have a group, a group debrief conversation. Another option is to send out an online survey or a paper survey. Um, the, bit, the important thing to remember if you are doing this is not to be tokenistic. If you're asking them for their goals, then be responsive where possible to assist them in reaching their goals. If you're asking about training, then be responsive where possible to offer training opportunities. So we're coming to the last one that we've got time to talk about today, and that's planning review meetings with your volunteer digital mentors. So at LEAP, we invite the volunteers to be involved in this decision-making processes and no one, oh, wait there, we've had someone oh. just write in. Let me just check what Helen says, both of which are. I have sent out a feedback form, says, wait there, we've got a few responses here, but it didn't come into just now. That's a bit slack, isn't it? Um, so let me get back to where we were. Yes, uh, Helen says yes, all of those things, plus ask if they feel they can provide training to other volunteers. Oh, absolutely. That's a great suggestion. Yes, absolutely. Darren says yes, I do ask for feedback from time to time, but not in a systematic way. Better than nothing, not at all, thanks Darren. Gail, I have sent out a feedback form to volunteers when they leave the program and at three monthly intervals to gauge effectiveness of the program. That's brilliant, Gail. Oh, she just knocked the key just a minute. Um, Helen says, or if they are interested in a committee role, also a volunteer position. Mm -hmm. Helen also says, both of which recognise value to the organisation, totally. Okay. Um, so um, for us, it may involve attending a program review meeting, such as this picture of our digital mentors who are meeting to discuss the processes in the Leap In Lab. And because of those meetings and the feedback we've got, we've changed things quite a few times, which you know, it keeps improving the program for mm. us and makes them feel like they're 
like totally part of the organisation. Our volunteers only leave when something changes in their life. They don't leave because they're not happy here. By inviting them to participate in this type of events, you are recognising their skills, their life experience and the importance of their role. Now, are there any other strategies participants um, would like to suggest about um, how you recognise or involve your volunteers? In planning, yeah. How do you involve your volunteers in planning? So training, recognition, support and supervision and involving them in planning are just some of the strategies, processes and tools you can use to successfully engage and harness your volunteer motivation. We don't want you to think this is all you have to do. It is just all we have time to talk about today. We also understand you may not be in a position to do everything we've suggested, but we hope knowing what strategies will support you run a successful volunteer-led program will give you the means to slowly transition your approach into these sort of practices. So we're coming to the end of the last stage of our volunteer cycle. We use the term transition for this part of the life cycle and we use it uh, rather than post-volunteering. Uh, and, and this is why. It's, it's during this phase that we conduct an exit interview and acknowledge the contribution uh, the volunteer has made. Um, but we also recognise that it's, it's not necessarily the end for them, it's just a, a stepping stone to the next part of their journey. I would like to ask you, why is it important to consider volunteer motivation when volunteers are leaving your organisation? Someone's writing in. Oh, thank you. Mary just had to leave. She has to leave early now. Okay. Um, but the rest of you, um, we still have 28 people. If you can tell us why you think it's important to ask motivation at the end. I mean, Janine's pretty much told you, but... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if you would like to give any other thoughts about why it's important or even if you have, if any of you do it, that would be great to know. We believe assessing a volunteer's motivation as part of the exit interview is a way we can be sure they have closure on their experience with us and will remain motivated to continue volunteering in the future. So it strengthens the sector. Can you pause? Because Natalie has said exactly that. Thank you, Natalie. She says they will refer people to you and connect you to other volunteers totally. Kevin says it's important to identify what has caused the resignation in case it can be addressed. Aren't we? We have amazing. I don't even know why you're all on here. You could be running this webinar yeah. yourselves. Okay, carry on. And um, so depending on... Oh, sorry. The exit interview is also an opportunity to learn about anything that needs improving in the organisation. So, Kevin, and that's what Helen yes, just said to, spot on. to review and improve your own processes. So, depending on how much time you have, the exit interview may be done as a face-to-face -face interview, an online or paper survey, or as we're about to show you, a short video which you could later use as part of your promotion strategy. Okay, here's a short video of one of Leap's exit interviews with Madhu. She was an admin volunteer with us, so whilst watching, we'd love you to make a list of all the things that kept Madhu motivated in this role at Leap and tell us one of them when you um, when you decide which one you want to share with us. Gail, we'll come back to you in a minute with your suggestion here. everyone here and uh, the question is like the more enjoyable each and every moment I enjoy here because the learning process and then the training what they have provided and then the care they took um, uh, the, the, everything like if, if I just worked once in a week but if I felt like an employee here they tra treated me uh, like one among them so I was like every time when I come here I won't feel like I'm volunteering here I'm I feel like I'm working here, especially during the volunteer week. They took us through the bowling and then uh, we had lunch together and then they recognized our work and then they gave a, a memento. And it was like, uh, it, it, it gives you a feeling that you need to do something like this. 
to others and then wherever you go you need to do something like this kind of work uh, and then I, I, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure that uh, whether I'll be getting the same kind of organization um, uh, when I move to some other places because this place is really amazing. Uh, they've trusted me a lot, that is the main part because being a volunteer, they, they have given me all the passwords and then they let me work in at home also. So they trusted me a lot and then uh, whatever um, uh, queries and then uh, whatever hurdles I faced, they were like, uh, 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 like uh, giving replies with a smile uh, from the CEO to the town employees or everybody, everybody here. Yes, I wish I would mention like Tarun, Laura, <laughs> Janine. Oh, it was really good working here. So each and every moment is, was enjoyable here. So do you have any of the any uh, suggestions of why do you think she was so motivated? Um, can you share with us? Thank you. And I'm going to share what Gail said before. She said motivation changes over time and the circumstances that brought them to you in the first place. The skills that they have used can often lead them to a permanent work in the area. Absolutely. Kevin says motivating people in a role is the most important managerial role regardless of volunteer or employee. Absolutely. Motivated people are more productive. That's absolutely right. So Gigi, if I'm saying that correctly, says given trust. That was why she was motivated totally. I, I think so too. Um, Natalie says training, recognition, flexibility. Absolutely. Let's just jump up again. Let me get down. Um, so that's all we've got so far. I like what Gail said about how motiva motivation changes. Um, so that kind of relates back to what we we're talking about with doing the support and supervision as well. So we ask about the motivation at the uh, pre-volunteering stage in the interview, then in, when they are volunteering, doing it at about the three months mark, just to check in with them and make sure that their, their motivations are still the same. Um, and then, of course, you can schedule another catch up later and, and just constantly checking in with people because it, that is an important point that motivations do change along the track, along the life cycle. And Gail's added that she felt like one of the employees and appreciated this. And, you know, it, for me, as a CEO, if every volunteer didn't feel like they were the same as an employee, I would feel I failed in my job, just like um, Kevin was saying too. Okay, um, we wanted to also give you um, some tips. Oi right there, girl. As uh, Gigi said, having flexibility, yes. Okay. Um, for those of you who were talking about feeling um, under resourced in your um, when you registered, there are organisations funded to support you, including the peak bodies in each state, as well as volunteer resource centres like ours. So. We're just going to give you, I'll um, show you, whether well, this link is in your resource pack, but just to show you what's out there. So most of you are logging in from New South Wales, but I will show you the other states as well. So this is um, this is the leap, and, and you can see leap is at the bottom here. Yes. That we've only newly been at it. We've only been existing for six, seven years, and they no seven years, and they finally put us in there. But that New South Wales is extremely well resourced. I'd say the best for all the states, though. So, Others are. So we had someone from South Australia. Um, you've got that many, which I think for South Australia is also extremely well resourced. So I'll let, we'll let you go there to check out um, who's close to you, but hopefully you're already accessing them. If you're not, please know you can. And if you're in Western Sydney, we are funded to support you. So be in contact um, after the webinar. Let me just get back out of this. Um, just sorry bit of a funny process. Okay, um, come to, um, we've come to the end of the webinar so if you have any questions you'd like to ask us please now start writing them because we haven't got much more to show you. We hope now that you have participated in this webinar you are a convert to applying volunteer motivation strategies to all of your management procedures. This philosophy needs to be embedded into your volunteer management practices. It is understanding the motivation of a potential volunteer, which leads to a successful match in a volunteer role in the pre-volunteer stage. It is providing them with support to achieve their goals during the active volunteering stage because there is a direct correlation between achieving these goals 
and their motivation to continue in the role. When they transition from the organisation, we can again demonstrate the value we place on them by conducting an exit interview whereby we can assess their motivation and achievement of their goals. And for those of you who've been contributing so amazingly today, I'd say the best thing you're going to get out of this webinar is that you're doing the right thing. And sometimes that's all you need to know is that you're doing the best you can. And, you know, there's no textbook on these things as far as I, I feel is. It's more around, like we say, a philosophy and an approach. So just before we finish, I want to show you um, the Community Net website and tell you about two e-newsletters that are free, Digital Inclusion, which is about supporting organisations set up digital mentoring programs and sharing what you're doing. You can submit any information about what you're doing in, um, in digital mentoring to us for free and we'll put it in here and share the story across Australia. Um, with volunteering, if you'd like to get any volunteer news, um, this is another free e-newsletter. So you'd click that one. And there's also volunteer opportunities that we advertise through. Um, so that's that. We hope we have given you some strategies and some inspiration to tweak your volunteer programs to suit your organisation. Of course, within a short time, it is impossible to go through everything in detail. But I can honestly say as a volunteer manager, the most exciting thing for me is seeing the growth and development of each volunteer in my team. Uh, not only do we make a difference in the lives of our participants, we make a difference in the lives of our volunteers. That is the key to maintaining motivation for volunteer engagement. Always ask yourself, how can we make a difference in this person's life? And Himadri has asked, how do you motivate challenging volunteer and bring the best out of them? What skill set is required? Himadri, can you um, out elaborate a little bit on what is that challenging volunteer, um, what particular aspect do you find challenging? Because I would say, just off the top of my head, waiting for you to respond, that, you know, it, whether it's a challenging volunteer or a challenging um, paid staff member, you treat people the same. You sit with them and give them honest feedback about what is what you're finding challenging. If it's conflicting with other people in the team, then that needs to be managed. And it, you know, it would come through your support and supervision session, where you know, it, like we said, it could be that they are not um, they're not meeting their needs through their role. And so they're not motivated, or it could be that they're, um, you know, they don't understand. They're not getting that your the communication channels aren't working for them or something, you know, like, um, mm -hmm. or it could be that they're a wrong fit for your organisation, and that might be hard to do. But at the end of the day, it is better to hit these things head on. So you've just explained that conflicting with other team members and breaking code of conduct despite constant follow up. So Himadri, I'm I'm so I'm not sorry to say this, but I really strongly urge you to deal with this head on and actually um, follow your own. Hopefully, you've got a policy procedure on grievances, but you cannot allow, even if it's a volunteer. To me, there should be no even if it's a volunteer. It should be everyone has the same code of conduct. If you break it, there are rules. And you know, if we had a paid team me meter um, member mm -hmm. not Res, uh, respecting the code of conduct, they would be out, wouldn't they, Ginny? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's it's okay to terminate a, a volunteer relationship as long as you do it respectfully. As long as you do it and respectfully, and, and you and you have it uh, you have it documented. You have it documented that you have tried to resolve the issue. Um, so make sure that if you do have a difficult volunteer, that you do when you meet with them take notes, um, make sure that they're not judgmental notes, make sure that they're very factual um, and make sure that uh, if you can get them, you're both agreeing to what the future actions are. Um, and then I guess you can decide in your organisation how many chances you give someone. Um, but if it is continuously happening and 
you've got to think about safety as well. Is the is are they breaching the code of conduct? Is it impacting on people's safety? Is it impacting on confidentiality? And impacting on your reputation. Reputation. And you will find that other volunteers won't want to come and work there if there is a volunteer that is creating those problems. So it's for yourself, for the organisation's long term. Mm. And can I also say as well, when you are chatting to people, um, one skill set that you could try and develop is making sure you come from a strength-based approach as well. So if you're not sure about what strength-based approach is, you can Google it and find some information. Um, I know that in uh, in a lot of our forms, when we're doing support supervision and our exit interviews, we or asking for, for feedback, we're always um, modifying and changing our questions to make sure we're coming from a strength-based approach rather than a... Which is looking at their strengths and maybe their strengths are better somewhere else. Mm, um, that's right. Yes, and another person on the panel um, in the participants also said they had the same problem. So mm, great to know. It's definitely a good topic tips. that could be a webinar in itself. Yes, it, yes. And you're not alone, Madri. There are you and us and anyone who deals with volunteers. And sometimes I think um, the hardest, um, I just got distracted because Amber's saying lovely to hear my voice. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Um, it's lovely to see you there too. Um, the... Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, that we we think, oh, they're volunteers, therefore we can't fire them. But that I find um, another topic where you're actually not respecting them if you're not treating them like you would anyone else. Just because they're a volunteer, it shouldn't ever be just because they're a volunteer. Mm -hmm. They are a volunteer. They are an uh, equal member of your team and they need to be treated the same way. But we have to end this webinar because we're already up to time. So I'm just going to finish off by saying Thank you to all of you. It's been amazing. We've really enjoyed, especially at Easter. We're amazed you're all on here. Um, we'd love you to send us any news on what changes you make based on anything we've shared with you. That would be fabulous. Um, we're sending out the survey within an hour so that you can give us some feedback. And um, I know there's something more there, but I want to say this. Um, you know you can write to us at hello at leap. And are we going to send the survey today? Yeah, we don't, we're doing it now, yeah, today, yeah, so great. you get the survey and give us some feedback. And our next webinar in this series is Tips for Recruiting Volunteers, which um, some of you um, sound like you need. We do have that consultancy program. If you ever need us for anything, don't hesitate to get in touch and we'll say goodbye. Yes, and um, thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Thank you all for your feedback. Kevin's looking forward to implementing most of the points and making a difference. Awesome. And we'd love to know how you go, Kevin. And Sarah yeah. says, wonderful webinar, very inspirational. Thank you. That's great to know. Darren says, thanks. Anna says, thank you for a great webinar. Helen says, thank you very much. See you at the centre. Yay, Helen, we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> and Gigi, is that right? Says, thanks and bye. And, and yeah. Marjorie says, goodbye. Very interactive. Thanks for the webinar. And Karen says, what is next webinar up there? That's tips for recruiting volunteers. On the 12th of April. 12th mm. of April, that one. And okay. thank you very much. Okay. Logging off now. We'll um, talk to you all soon. It takes a few clicks here, so we're ending it now. Yeah.